Good morning. Today, I'm going to read to you Team Darby part, part two. Now, yesterday I read every single class spirit, I think, and my voice was just shot by the end of the day. I was feeling horrible. So today I'm just gonna record it once for you and you have paper copies if you need to. This is the, the finale. What do you say? Like the end of it? Look at my eye. It's getting worse. All right. So remember in part one, the little boy, what's his name? Matthew. Matt was not excited that he was going to play basketball with his dad because his dad was like a nerd or a dork. I forget what they use in the story. He, uh, and there was a guy that was intimidating him like, oh, we're going to beat you and your old dorky old man. <laughs> so, the, and then they had one practice and it was very horrible. So this is the conclusion of part two. The rest of the week passed in the same manner. Every evening, Matt and his father practiced. At every, and every night at dinner, Mr. Darby acted as if he and Matt were longtime army buddies gearing up for battle, getting ready for battle. <clears throat> Doesn't he get it? We're going to make complete fools of ourselves. And he thinks this is fun. Matt wished the time would slow down, but the days passed quickly. And before he knew it, the tournament was only a day away. He and his father were squeezing one more practice in. Mr. Darby had finally got the hang of dribbling, but his shooting was a disaster. If he was lucky, he shot the rim, but more often than not, the ball flew over or under the blackboard, the backboard entirely. But Maddox succeeded in teaching his father to pass effectively. He figured as long as his dad passed the ball to him instead of trying to shoot it, they wouldn't be laughed off the court and they might even score some points. Nevertheless, Matt hoped he'd get lucky and the tournament would be rained out. If I'm really lucky, he thought there will be an earthquake. There were no natural disasters. There wasn't even a cloud in the sky the morning of the tournament. Matt couldn't have been more disappointed. He dragged himself out of bed and pulled on his sweats. Awesome. Thank you, Roland. I'm reading part two now. When he headed downstairs, he found his parents and sister already sitting at the kitchen table. His dad was just finishing to um, a huge breakfast. If I were you, I'd be on the questions for part two. Hang on, let me pause this. Hey, pal, better eat up before we go. I'm not too hungry, dad. I'll just have some juice. I think this is a test question. Matt couldn't believe his dad was so excited. How can he eat at a time like that? When the Darby's got to go, uh, got to the school, the courts were crowded with fathers and sons warming up. Onlookers, mostly mothers and daughters, filled the bleachers. Matt and Mr. Darby blended into the group of fathers and sons, although no one seemed to notice him. Matt felt like his dad stuck out like a sore thumb. So he's really embarrassed of his dad. Do you guys ever feel like that? Your parents embarrass you? I get that all the time for my kids. Um, Matt looked around at the other fathers. Most of them looked like older versions of their sons. They wore the same basketball shorts, t-shirts and sneakers. Matt's father, on the other hand, was wearing heavy sweatpants and a matching sweatshirt as if he feared catching a cold by exercising outside. And of course he was wearing loafers. Mr. Darby also had tied a rubber cord to the end of his glasses and wrapped it around his head to prevent his glasses from falling off. All in all, Matt thought his father made a pretty pathetic picture. He knew it wouldn't be long before Trent Walker noticed and he was right. Oh, you're welcome. I also didn't give you 15 questions. I gave you five, right? Right? You're welcome. Hey, Dweeby, excuse me, I meant Darby. Trent seemed to appear out of nowhere. It's really too bad you and your dad won't make it far enough for me to beat you because you're not making it past the first round. Trent walked away laughing at himself, so he's a bully. Making an early exit didn't sound like a bad idea to Matt. That way he wouldn't have to drag out the embarrassment any longer than necessary. And his dad would have had the chance to play a little. Unfortunately, into Matt's utter amazement, they won the first game. Andy Dowd and his father made it hard for them not to win. Andy's father was a decent player, but Andy was not. He was even worse than Matt's dad. Maybe we should swap partners, Matt thought. Dad and Andy can get killed, and Mr. Dowd and I can win the whole thing. Hashtag selfish. 
Mr. Dowd was a big guy who seemed afraid of knocking Mr. Darby down if he touched him at all, so he barely defended him, leaving Mr. Darby open to pass the ball to Matt. Andy was no match for Matt, who darted around him to score easy layups. Team Darby won 20 to 14. We kicked butt. I knew we would. Who's the next victim, Mr. Darby asked. Mrs. Darby and Lisa gave a thumbs up sign from the sidelines. Matt returned the gesture, a smile stretched across his face. How long was this going to last? You think they're going to win the tournament? Are you listening to me or listen to your music? We're not done. You should have part two up with now. Did you get a hundred? Matt trotted to the sideline to retrieve the ball and pass it to um, his father. Mr. Walker was covering him closely. Matt could not find a clean pass. Finally, he sent a bounce pass to his father's right side. Mr. Darby had to take a quick step around Mr. Walker to catch and pass. Oh, and in doing so, they stepped right out of his left loafer. So his shoe fell off. He stood clutching the ball to his chest, one foot bare, unsure of what to do next. The walkers immediately burst into laughter. Quick, Dad, pass, shouted Matt. Mr. Darby quickly passed the ball to Matt, who sunk a perfect jump shot. Way to go, Dad. Matt gave his father a high five. I'm surprised he started to be nice to his dad. The walkers toughened up after sinking basket after basket. Matt scored a few points, but the walkers never eased up again on their defense, and their height made it difficult to get a shot up. Finally, Mr. Darby had, Darby had the ball, and he couldn't get a pass off to Matt, who was being guarded by both Trent and his father. Mr. Darby looked at Matt and then eyed the basket. Matt yelled, pass, Dad, pass. Mr. Darby took a deep breath. He lifted the ball over one shoulder. He heaved it towards the basket. Swoosh. Matt couldn't believe his eyes. His dad was jumping up, 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 up and down, laughing, staring at the basket. Maybe I am Michael Jordan after all. Matt suddenly felt terrible. He'd been so busy, worried about his father messing up the game. He never even gave him a chance to play. He screamed at his dad to pass immediately every time he got the ball. Trent's father had been barking orders at Trent since the beginning of the game. And Matt realized he didn't have, he hadn't been much easier on his dad. Remember, they're playing the bully. Now the bully bullies Matt because the bully's dad bullies him. Does that make sense? Even with blisters and sore feet, Mr. Darby had never complained. In fact, Matt realized his dad was having the time of his life. Mr. Darby wasn't embarrassed he couldn't play basketball as well as the other fathers. He was just enjoying the time with his son. Suddenly, winning the game wasn't so important. After the game, Matt expected Trent to give him a hard time because they lost 20 to eight. Uh, Matt didn't care. He was here to have some fun with his dad. Um, he thought the bully was going to give him a hard time, but Trent was on the far side of the court receiving a lecture from his father, test question, who apparently didn't think Trent had played as well as he could have. It's just a game, Matt thought. He should lighten up. Matt put a, his arm around his dad and together they strode off the court. That night, as the Darby sat down at dinner, Matt left the room and returned with a large box. He placed it on the table in front of his father. What's this? Just a little something I thought you could use for next time. You know, if I'm going to teach you how to play basketball. Mr. Darby opened up the box and pulled out a pair of sparkling white basketball sneakers. Oh, such a good story. He started to appreciate his dad at the end. Awesome story. You only have five questions. You're welcome. Bye.